What's up everybody? Today is Supreme Decisions and today I want to talk about transcripts. It may seem like something simple, but many of us are walking into certain issues where we're having to get them for either appeals or we're having to get them to go on to the second stages of even federal lawsuits. Now, the thing about it, it becomes a costly thing and one of the biggest things that we'll run into is the fact that most of us have no idea, one, how to request them, who to request them from, and the next part is the request itself, how it needs to be worded, or who can get it either discounted or how to get it discounted. Well, one of the things that I'm going to give you today is Griffin v. Illinois, 1956, 351 U.S. 12. Indigents are entitled at public expense to transcripts, portions of the records, or alternative materials necessary to appeal. That's one of our greatest assets because that's part of the access to courts, I guess you would call that clause, that's in our Constitution. Now, when we're following that, it also goes under Draper v. Washington, as well as Mayor v. Chicago. These are all old as cases that go under Griffin v. Illinois. Remember, like I told you, Terry v. Ohio has several underlying cases that go apart. But here's one that actually kind of goes on to expound on that. MLB v. SLJ 519 U.S. 102 1996. Now, this dealt with a mother's inability to prepay the cost of a transcript which is needed for appeal in a termination of parental rights action. This is also something that can be used in criminal actions because it was held to be a violation of equal protection and due process. In a criminal case, the state must provide an indigent defendant with a transcript of prior proceedings when the transcript is needed for an effective defense or appeal. Remember, I just said in other instances, not only appeal, they're required to show or to offer a transcript of the prior proceedings when it is needed for an effective defense. That's part of a vigorous defense. You've heard me talk about that before too. And in Britt v. North Carolina, 414 U.S. 226, it followed the second part. The burden is on the state to show that a transcript of a prior proceeding requested by an indigent defendant is not needed for an effective defense or appeal. Now, these are the things that I speak about often. People want to say that the prosecutor who has prosecutorial discretion, which is a prosecutorial choice, which is also them cherry picking a case. Part of that cherry picking implies that they are willing to take on the expense of defending their stance, which is you don't need that transcript for an effective defense. Now, they must provide in writing why you don't need that because they must be able to stand on that. If they don't, it is a moot point to which you are allowed and should win with. Three, ordinarily it is assumed that a transcript of a preliminary hearing would be a valuable to a defendant without requiring showing of need tailored to the facts of the particular case. Because again, if you're requesting the transcript from prior hearings, it is automatically assumed or assumed that you're going to need them because that's part of the defense. So remember that because you remember I talked about before in a video where I spoke about the, your defense, not doing a vigorous defense. This is part of a vigorous defense. And it goes on in Griffin v. Illinois is also the 1956 case we just spoke of. And it held that criminal defendants may not be denied the right to appeal due to the inability to pay for a trial transcript. If a defendant is indigent, he is entitled to appeal without the payment of a filing fee in form of papyrus to a copy of the reporter's transcript 
the verbatim account of the in-court proceedings and is entitled to the appointment of counsel to represent him on appeal. And this also goes into, remember I told you, they go under federal guidelines. This one falls under 18 USC section 3006A as well as 28 USC section 753G. So understanding weaponizing your defense begins, ends, and continues with the transcript. Your inability to pay for it has to be shown and also has to be defended if it's not turned over. Remember, the motion to compel is something that must be turned over. It's not a choice. And if you're going to stand on something, it must be stood on in this manner. If you like what you're hearing, share this video. Subscribe to the channel. Leave a comment, snide or otherwise. But most of all, support the channel by joining or donating. These are the things that allow me to keep doing what it is that you guys hopefully enjoy and are able to use. So, support the podcast, the Supreme Decision Legal Minute Podcast. is on all your major podcasting platforms. And last but not least, hit the like and Supreme out.